Dr. Denise Ejo, the CEO of Comod Cancer Foundation. I would like to welcome you to our Comod Cancer Foundation page. Our goal is to create an awareness of the challenges, support and guidance experienced in managing cancer care for sufferers, family, carers and friends. To engage with us, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click our notification bell. The second and fourth Wednesday of the month in conjunction with Comod Cancer Foundation is coming up next and we will be having our very delightful and able uh, Dr. Uh, Dennis Ejo, okay. and who will be joined by a consultant, radiation and clinical oncologist, Dr. Mitu Alani Jimo, and they'll be discussing the benefits of cancer screening. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Good morning. You? You're looking good. <laughs> you too. Thank you, Dr. Ejo. Good to see you again. So we'll yield the floor to you now so You're you can. You're looking bright, man. Nice sunshine, it seems. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Likewise, you're looking good too. Over to you. All right. Thank you. Good morning, viewers, and welcome to another of our discussions on cancer awareness. Um, it's very nice to have you on today. And uh, we want to thank AIT for this opportunity and this sponsorship that they've given to us. So um, in the house today, we have got Dr. Jimo, uh, who was born in Nigeria, where he received his degree in medicine from Ola Bis. Ola BC Onobanjo University in Ogun State. I'm going to try and read out his bio because I got a lot of questions for him. And um, I think we're all going to enjoy that. So, no, Dr. No. Jimo, good morning and welcome to our discussion on cancer. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> he joined the University College or Hospital Ibadan in 20, 2008 for his postgraduate training where he completed his residency fellowship training in radiation and clinical oncology. Now you all know that me and all these science words <laughs> do not work. <laughs> he is a member of the American Society for Clinical Oncology, is board certified in clinical oncology by clinical radiation oncology by the West African College Surgeons. Oh, well, it's going to help us to get through what we want today. He has special interest in the treatment of head and neck, breast, gastrointestinal, intestinal, and gynecological oncology subspecialty. Wow. That means you've been spending a lot of time in school, doctor. Whoa, 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 whoa. You must really enjoy. Thank Good morning you. and welcome to the show. Um, today we are really looking at, we're trying to get through our cancer awareness with a lot of questions focusing on screening and awareness. And it is very key for us, but you will see while I start, when I start to ask you questions, where I'm coming from. So the first question, are you seated? Are you calm now? Are you ready for me? Yes, I'm calm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seated and calm in my office. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. What is the purpose of cancer screening and what happens during screening? Mm, mm, mm. You see, thank you very much. We mention screening in, in cancers all the time, but screening is not for cancer alone. There are some other non communicable diseases like hypertension, diabetes, that screening can be done. You see, screening simply means Inject a group of people to certain tests without symptoms of and sign of a disease, then you are carrying out a screening. And when you do this, you'll be able to detect if there's going to be a disease early enough before the signs and symptoms. So it's very, very important. For example, now, some diseases that are not preventable, screening can help. Some diseases that are preventable, screening can help. So people that have high risk, screening can help. So it simply means you subject a group of people to certain tests to detect if there's the disease or not before they now have symptoms and signs. Before, before symptoms and signs, the disease may likely be there. But it is the, the screening that will bring all these things out to doctors, office clinicians, so that they can start treating. treating. Thank you. Fantastic. You see, I like nice and simple answers because, you know, we, the populists, we're not medical. We I don't know, know. know what works for us. 
and yes, what yes. it means to us so we can work. Thank you. That yes. was very nice and slim and nice. So what cancers can be treated through screening now? Good. And Thank I'm you being very, very much. Specific because there are quite a lot. Oh, good. Thank you very but much. But then we would rather focus on the ones based in Nigeria that are, are, will affect the African continent. Oh. Good. Thank, Thank you. you very much. That's a good question. You see, we focus in, in West African region. Common cancers that we have, we have breast cancer, which is common in women. So we do screening in breast cancer. Right. Cervical cancer is also in women. We do screening for cervical cancer. Then we have colorectal cancer. Screening can also be done. It involves both male and female. We have prostate cancer. Screening can be done for prostate cancer. It also in men. Then we also have lung cancer. Both men and women, screening can also be done. These are the examples, few examples of the cancers that we can do screening so that we can detect before the symptoms and signs. You will see a patient with prostate cancer that will present to you for the first time with spread of the diseases because there wasn't symptom. A patient is going about. The first thing you are going to see is patient cannot walk. No previous symptoms and signs before this. So patient is coming in stage four. So, but if the patient has been doing screening, they will have detected before that stage. Thank you very much. You see now, you've just interested me here because, <laughs> you know, you see, I told you that halfway along this road, I will start asking you real questions because yes, yes, um, yes. when it comes to screening from where you're, where, what you've just explained, right? It's very interesting. Yeah. I look at it as a non-medical person who is in the cancer journey. Hmm, hmm, I hmm, did hmm. not have any symptoms. At all. At all. It's possible. Apart from a headache. <laughs> It's possible. But, yeah, that's you see, that's why I said it's interesting because everybody thinks that it and that's where I, that is where I come up with the statement now that cancer cancer does not a, any everyday sickness can be hmm. cancer and we would not know. We so, would not know exactly. Yes, exactly. We wouldn't know. I agree with you. It makes, us, it makes us we need to be very aware of our bodies. And, exactly. And when there's any change and it's a persistent change, we need to just think about it. Anyway, thank yes, you, I thank do. you, because I had to come back on that. That that statement, I was like, oh gosh, <laughs> Man, a lot of people are in my shoes, and they are always crying because I was. Shocked. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, but it, we don't know. We're, we're not medics, and it's not anyway. <laughs> let's go on. Does anyone, okay. everyone, need screening? And at what point should an individual go for screening? How often? Thank you very much. That's a very good question. Everyone needs screening. Especially old age, people that have family history. For example, somebody somebody's mother died of breast cancer. Somebody's father died of prostate cancer. They need to start screening. Not only the first generation children, even the extended families. Right. So they need to start screening before the signs and symptoms. So there are people that, that are smoking, smokers, they need screening. For example, we mention part of the disease that we can screen, we mention lung cancer. We know smoking is one of the risk factors of lung cancer. Then people that are also being exposed, you know, all these occurs, they are being exposed to ultraviolet, you know, exposure to radiation, sun and all that, they also need screening. You know, people that have been exposed to some certain infections like human papilloma virus, we talk about cervical cancer now. So they also need screening. Everyone needs screening. We need to make noise so that people can go because it's cheaper. In Western world, doctor, they prefer to spend money on screening than treatment because they know it's cheaper because of insurance. It's cheaper for them. When they subject their staffs to screening, what they detect and they can start treating on until when it gets to you know cancer that they will spend much more money. So it's cheaper, it's always cheaper and preventable. Mm. For this case. Thank you. 
you see now, you see now, you have brought me to where I wasn't yet ready to discuss, but I'm going to come back now on this matter. Okay, no problem. No because problem. Because in Nigeria, and one of the biggest drivers for us in Common Cancer Foundation is mm -hmm. the fact that the awareness program is 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 growing, but the mm. pain for a lot of us who are advocates um, in mm. the sector and the medics, the medical doctors and, and, and support teams that work with it, are, are not being given the tools to do mm. what they need to do. Mm. And mm. unless mm. we address that, because I come back to the questions of who is responsible Mm, and for mm. those responsible, why are they not doing what they are supposed to be doing? Because mm, if they mm, do it, mm. then this statement you've just made should not be coming up. Mm. Because globally, you are right. Screening is the highest. Mm. And that is a big question for everybody. So from my perspective, are there any key facts uh, about cancer we need to be aware of? Um, especially narrowing it down to the role of government and mm advocates in nigeria that are going to make a difference and help us i mean i use the word us because i don't use it lightly i am us i live with the disease i am i've just started a new chemo and i'm feeling the effect very badly and, and okay i am living in a developed country now where i am a trial but how many people have that opportunity to be able to gotten on such a program because it's very expensive like you rightly pointed out so please help yeah, help yeah. yeah because Thank, um, thank you very much, Dr. Dennis. You are very lucky because you look like white. That's why you are recruited. Now, the percentage of black among the clinical trials in Western world are insignificant. But you are very lucky. Right. So, the facts we need to know about cancer, number one thing is that it's the second cause of death after cardiovascular diseases. Yes. Number two, the incidence is increasing. Mm -hmm. And as the incidence is increasing in cancers, we also have the death rate increasing. And we also know that at least one third of this cancer can be prevented. So by doing screening, why not? And that millions of naira's have been spent on management of cancer, especially in, develop, in developing countries where you are going to pay out of pocket. Government is trying. I'm not saying government is not doing well. Nowadays now, you see, that's what we call Cancer Edge Fund now in Nigeria for indigenous patients. They will register, they will enroll them, and they can take care of that. There are some also drugs that are also included in NHIS that they are benefiting, but it's not really not enough. They are doing their best. So with all this fact, we need to make sure we start screening so that we detect this in LA and the cost will be reduced. Thank you. Okay, so based on what you've just said, because yeah, I'm also I'm also following this cancer health fund. Yes, uh, and it's very interesting because we're still trying to understand uh, accountability on how many people have benefited based on when it started. Not I'm not even going to go into how much was raised. Let us because I've had the National Cancer <laughs> Cancer um, uh, Society um, okay in Nigeria on. So I know that we have issues, but looking at what you're saying to me, which is very factual, we have, we have to look at the positives. But in the same way as looking at the positives, the cost of basic, if, if is the, okay, the, the, um, the screening costs, mm. why is mm. that not being, why, why, why can't that be put into every, every body? Okay, it's a it's a gradual thing. You know what I mean? Because when when I look at it and they say to do a PSA test is one thousand naira or three thousand naira or something like that, that doesn't make sense to me. That why is that not available for everybody? It just it just doesn't make sense because hmm. we're spending so much money on everything we shouldn't be, and what is supposed to keep our people alive, and with health there is wealth. That is a statement hmm. of fact globally. So if that is the case, why is that not a priority? Even now yeah. we're looking at the campaigns. Nobody's still talking about health. The closest person is only one one or two politicians really talking about health. The rest is, I don't know. You no, know, government is trying. That, 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 that's what I'm saying. We thank, you see, we need to thank them that for starting this. I agree, I but think. it's not enough. <laughs>
Hey, I know we will continue to make noise. We will continue to make noise and also to, to inform them that we need more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We need more. <laughs> Thank you. I need more. Uh, yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> a lot of us are, are plenty and we're crying. Are there any particular groups of people that need to be more aware of this? Yes. The, thank you very much. You see, th those are the things that I'm saying that creating awareness, making noise to every individual, not only adults, because we also have some cancers in children. And uh, when we are talking about cancers, we, we, we pay less attention to children. And it's also very important to also, also carry along, when we are talking about cancers in adults, we also carry along talking about cancers in children, because we also have cancers in children. So, elderly people, people with family history, people that have been exposed, this kind of people must take screening very, very serious. It's not a joke. And then, NGOs, governments need to also make noise. Like you are doing now, this is part of advocacy that we are talking about. Through the media, our people, are they ready to listen to us? Are they ready to pay attention to this? Because people are struggling to find what to eat. Are they ready to listen? So they need people need to listen to medias, to read papers. You see, those are the way we can pick all those informations that you need. So people are going about with cancer, but no symptoms and signs until its end, end stage. So these are the group of people. Everyone, like I said, everyone needs that screening. Everyone needs to hear about it. And okay, what so, means? Okay. okay, okay. So without the me without the media, public yeah. media doing this discussion now, mm. and the NGOs, because. I'm part of that as well. And honestly, the work that is being done, well, then, then we have to recognize the work you guys do. When we look at percentage impact, okay, give me an idea. Ah, we have see. a 200 population. No, we no, no. That we have no. uh, yes. uh, how many millions out of, out of uh, in the poverty, on the poverty line. So when you calculate yes. that number, that is no. a number that you know are not getting health. Yes, Which Dr. Dennis. Biggest challenge for people like you, me. You, yes, Dr. Dennis, you need to also consider our culture. Yeah, you I cannot do. compare our culture with Western world and pay attention to our head. Are you getting the point now? So, because you have to put that one into consideration, people will tell you. So there are some things that people will tell you that cancer is not my person. <laughs> yes. People say that develop cancer and those things say it's not cancer. We have seen some patients in the hospital. They, they, they are in denial. You see? And this is part of ignorance. A learned fellow, a back monitor with bilateral breast cancer from Gates, you'll be surprised. So, you see, our culture too, our attitude towards pay attention to our health is also very important. Look at the issue of COVID vaccine. It's free. Are people, are they getting it? That's the point. They say, come and take COVID vaccine. People are not coming. Now, if your people will take one or two, booster is available now. People are not going there. This is free. Some people will not go there when they need those, those vaccination cards. See, this is an attitude we are talking about. We need to also lay emphasis on that too. We continue to make noise, but our people need to change their attitude, perception towards what you are seeing, Dr. Dennis. I, it's I, quite I, different I, from what... I still strongly agree with you because I can't lie. I have done all my vaccines. I didn't do all. I did the ones that were important to me, right? But I know what I have to have. I know what the basics are because I take chemo. So I, I cannot afford not to have them. So I agree with you. I also agree with you very well uh, about the issues to do with uh, us, the, the populace not responding. Be but I also explain that cancer is stigmatization. And it's not stigmatization just in Nigeria. Mm. It is stigmatization globally. The only mm. problem is within the Afro-Caribbean communities mm. of black ethnic minority, that's how we call it, um, communities globally, mm. we see it as we are more prone to all these values that mm. contradict what we need to do. Okay? But yeah. in the same way, I have to say, I was born and brought up in Nigeria. I was diagnosed in Nigeria. I wasn't diagnosed yet. 
I have been taking mm-hmm. treatment even in Nigeria. So it's not about being in Nigeria or being anywhere. It's about us being able to take responsibility for our learning. And our learning is because we have a, a very high illiterate group. Mm-hmm. So who cost it? Because mm-hmm. if we, we cannot say we cannot say it is the medics that cost it. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Somebody cost yeah. it. And people that cost, need to yeah. take responsibility for it. Because until those issues are addressed, no matter how we try to aware like now, like now we have videos in Yoruba Ibu and Hausa. We're trying to get mm-hmm. funding to get those videos up. Um, not just videos. Because as we go on, people have to do town hall meetings. We've got to find yes. how to get into the communities where there is no light. And because yes. we have to accept it. It's not just yes. about um, television. Television is one move. After mm-hmm. we've got radio, from radio, we've got, you know, we've got things we have to go and it's a process. And the council space, uh, advocate space is really doing a lot. But some, mm-hmm. the government has to do some. Unless you're going to say to me that, no, I, that, that is a bit harsh. But I, I can't understand how that's harsh. Because I, uh, for someone like me that was born in Lagos, I was born in, I grew up in Yaba. So, <laughs> so Dr. Dennis, I agree with you. Like, like I said about the issue of media, even one on one contact is also very important. State government, federal government are trying, they are doing a lot because I've, I'm involved. I cannot say they are not, they are not trying. I don't want to say, but we need more. We need more. I agree with you. But we also need to change our attitude and perception. I'm still saying it. I agree, I no, I agree with you. I agree with you. No, no, I agree with you. But I think it's two ways. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, yeah, good. That's good. Ways. Great. And I think Great. other people have to take responsibility. Okay, so Great. give me two. Okay. This is my last question. And it says, give me two priorities that we need the government to address. And yeah. I and mine, I've said my own. Mine is education, education. Yes. Education and awareness, I agree with you. Education and awareness together. And then also screening, like you said. Okay. Also screening. Screening, like you said, the whole populace can be screened. Okay. Education and awareness, screening. There are even people that are detect early treatment, if they can be offered, like they are doing in the cancer headphone now. They will continue to make noise on that area. From education and awareness, then the screening and the treatment. Okay. I want to say a very big thank you to you for joining us today. You're welcome. Um, You're welcome. Especially You're welcome. to thank AIT for sponsoring this program and um, to share a few of the other things that we do so that police understand our work. And we have a big program called Let's Talk About It, which is going back on and is registrations based. Yes. So all our programs that will keep the um, population abreast of what we're doing, we have a monthly Zoom we have our uh, uh, webinars, we have our stakeholders engagement, and all our platforms work. So our social media platforms are at Komoot Cancer Foundation. Yeah. You will get this video on our YouTube channel and clips will be found on our Instagram, Facebook, our website, and LinkedIn. I want to thank you very, very much for joining us. I want to thank especially yeah. AIT for funding this pro this project and we look forward to actually seeing you again or oh, coming back on on ait in two weeks thank you very much dr dennis thank you ait thank you everyone <laughs> thank we are you. thanking everyone so we are waiting for our host to come back on so we okay. can um finish up what we want to tidy up and look oh, at where we are. we're loving you all right <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dr. Dennis Edger. Thank you, Dr. Dennis. Thank you, AIT. Are you, I don't know if you can see them, but I can yeah. see them. Yes, yeah, I can see I can see them. Thank you, Dr. Mutiu Alanijimo and uh, Dr. Dennis Thank you very Edger. Much. You're welcome. I know you're running off to your clinic. All right. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right, then. Yeah. Have a great day ahead. And-